In this lesson, we'll take a look at Cinema 4D's Step Effector. So the Step Effector is one of these effectors that you could use for a lot of different effects. So what we'll do in this lesson is really just sort of take a look at some of the different possibilities that you have with this effector and just sort of give you an idea of how we can start to work with it. So in this scene, I have a cube object that's just been piped through a cloner. And I have this cloner right now set to a linear mode, so it's just sort of creating a nice straight line of cones, or of cubes. And what we'll do is use our step effector to create some sort of interesting animated effects along these clones. So with my clone selected, let's go up to MoGraph, Effector, and let's drop in our step effector. Okay, so taking a look at my cloner in the effectors tab, you can see my step effector is connected in here. That's exactly what we want. If it's not, you can just take your step effector and drag and drop it in to your effectors tab of your cloner. Now if you take a look at the step effector in the parameters tab, what we have right now by default is uh, right now it's just controlling scale. So essentially what the step effector will do is it will take whatever uh, values we have set for this and it will apply those to the very last clone and then it will basically interpolate all of your different clones in between to sort of match the end. So for example, if I turn off my scale, let's maybe take something like my position. I can come in and start to increase this position, let's say maybe to 300 centimeters. And what Cinema 4D is doing is, like I said, it'll take my very last clone and it will move that up to 300 centimeters. And then it will go back and interpolate all the other clones in between in order to make this final result. Now, looking at this, you can see that it's actually not creating a very straight line. It's sort of a little bit of a curve to it. Well, there is actually a reason for that. If I take a look at the effectors tab of this step effector, in this, uh, one of the special things that we have with this step effector is this spline control. And if you take a look at this spline, you can actually see the exact relationship between the shape that we have here and the shape of this spline. So essentially, Cinema 4D is telling uh, this very last point here, once we have 100% influence, don't necessarily make it just a straight line, sort of ease into that last little bit of influence. That's exactly what we have. Now we could come in and change this if we wanted to. So if I move this up just a little bit higher so you can see this. If I right click in this area, we can come down to our spline presets and I could set this to something like linear, which now you can see nice straight line and a nice straight line here. I can also come in and start to add as many of these points as I want. So if I hold the control key on my keyboard, I can come in here and start to add some splines or start to move some of these around. And again, you can see an exact relationship between the position of all of our clones and this little effector spline that we have inside. So essentially what we're reading is at our very first clone, which is right at the beginning, we have zero influence. Now by the time we reach halfway through our clone stack, we have already hit 100% influence. And then by the time we reach the very last clone, we've gone all the way back down to zero influence. And again, these uh, areas of influence come from this parameters tab. So if I were to turn off my position and maybe go to scale instead, we could come in here and let's maybe turn off this uniform scale and let's really dial this up. So just like before, now we have the very first clone that has zero uh, additional scale applied to it, which is what we have here. By the time we reach the middle of our clone list, we have all of this scale that is taking place, and then by the time we get to the end of our clones, we are back to 0%. Okay, so we can come in here, like I said, and have a lot of fun with this. Uh, this really does provide a lot of power. We can also come in here and take advantage of, like I said, some of these spline presets to get some different types of effects. And again, you can really start to see the relationship between the result of your clones and the kind of curves that we have set up in this effector tab. So this step effector definitely does become a really, really powerful thing to have. Now, we can also take this a step further by starting to take a look at the falloff controls for this. So right now we have our falloff set to infinite, which means it affects all of our clones equally. 
Now let's come in here and maybe set this to something like linear. Now with this linear, we can come in here and you can see we can start to just slide this back and forth and get some really, really interesting results. So if we wanted to animate this moving, essentially now we have our uh, sort of animated effect here at this point. Now we can even take this a step further. So let's say we take our linear effector and let's just move this over to the side. Now in this fall off, we can come in here and start to introduce maybe some kind of a spline. So let's right click. We'll go to spline presets, which is actually being cut off on the bottom of your screen, but I'm going to go down to spline presets and let's drop in something like a linear. Now if I play this through, nothing happens. But with this linear curve in here now, I can start to introduce some spline animation. And you can see we're essentially taking this effect curve and we're animating this effect through time. So at this point, we're animating the effect of zero influence rising all the way up to 100% influence in these areas. Okay, so that's actually really, really nice. Now we can also take this clamped function and turn that off and now we get some really interesting effects where once we reach the end of this curve it's actually going back and repeating again. So we get sort of this really neat little stair-stepping effect where we go from 100% influence right back to 0%. And that's what's creating sort of these little arrowheads. I could come back in here and maybe bump that back up and start to, again, maybe create some really interesting effects here. So if I hold down the control key and maybe add sort of an effect there in the middle, with this falloff curve, like I said, we can really, really start to get some interesting effects here. So what we could also do now is if we wanted to, let's say maybe instead of have this grow, uh, let's say we wanted to keep these uh, sort of repeating patterns in here, these really high patterns, sort of going all throughout. Well, at the moment, you can see these are not having any sort of an effect down here toward the beginning of our clone list. So all we have to do is go back to our effector tab, and we just need to take this uh, point and raise that up. So now we have 100% effect on this back end. And we could actually come in here. Let's go in here, maybe just reset that to a linear. Take that last point and bring that up. So now we have 100% influence all the way across. And at that point now, we're pretty much just using this animation on our fall off to create this effect. So by playing with these uh, different features, we can really, really start to get some, some powerful effects as you can start to see here. So as you start to come in and experiment with some of your own looks and your own uh, sort of needs, you'll find that this step effector is definitely a very, very powerful feature to have.